Salam, you're watching News Click. I'm Siddhant Ani and my partner in crime is Leslie Xavier, our sports editor. Uh, we're doing our weekly roundup of all of the action, uh, or at least top stories from our perspective, what we thought were the most interesting stories uh, in the week of sport. Uh, we have a football special today, a uh, complete football show, uh, because of course Sunday was a day of finals. We had the final of the Africa Cup of Nations uh, being played in Cameroon. And we had the final of the Asian Women Championship being played in Navi Mumbai. Uh, both both very interesting games. Uh, one giving us five goals, the other giving us no goals at all. Uh, very different games, uh, both. But we are leading with uh, electioneering, a uh, little bit of politics and the governance of football, actually. Uh, the All India Football Federation, which has come under fire over the past couple of weeks, firstly because of its mismanagement of India's team at the Asian Women's Championship, uh, leading to a mass outbreak of COVID-19, uh, as many as al almost the entire squad actually, uh, both playing staff as well as support staff were infected with the virus and India therefore had to withdraw after playing just one game in a tournament that we were hosting uh, and in which we have not participated uh, since back in 2003. Uh, of course, we have talked about the disappointment and all of that. Uh, but today, we are leading off this show, Leslie, uh, because uh, you've been speaking to people and uh, football administrators from around the country uh, got together uh, on the 5th of Feb to demand many things, I guess, to take stock of what's happening in football, to ask questions about when uh, the election is going to happen to elect the next president of the All India Football Federation and its executive committee, which takes all of the top level de decisions. Uh, tell us what's going on, Les. Uh, to start with, uh, I guess there was no uh, this the questioning about election and the future of future course of AF of All India Football Federation and the uh, office bearers. It was not in the agenda to start with. Uh, just that dissent was always brewing in the in the federation in small pockets because uh, I mean it's a it's a very tricky setup the All India Football Federation when you look at it I mean the control I mean top heavy control and all the perks and benefits that trickle down to the states controlled by the federation and the officials and so it's it's everybody scratching each other's back uh, back and it has been happening for a while now just that. Uh, Praful Patel's regime and uh, how they have been running the show and how we have we have spoken a, a, a lot about how Indian football as it seems to be completely lost in in direction in that way because of the top every league and the priorities that has been set to serve certain people who who apparently own I mean their own Indian football at this point. So uh, last month. Uh, uh, in December, in fact, when I was uh, traveling in Bangalore for a couple of stories, I uh, happened to meet a few football officials there, Karnataka Football Association officials. And uh, we were talking many things about local football tournaments. We were, in fact, sitting at the sidelines of uh, of their district championship, Bangalore champ uh, League. And uh, they were holding their championships and uh, they were happy that it's being held in their own small way. And uh, then... Suddenly, the conversation swerved into the point that they will push for it. And these Karnataka officials, the people that I spoke to at that point, they were very clear that we will push for the elections. We will start questioning. It's about time we did. Of course, me being the skeptic that I am, having seen how administration, sports administration runs in the country, I, I, took, I heard them. I took it with a pinch of salt saying, yeah, let's see. Because it never happens in Indian sport administration that we were a, a huge questioning about a all-powerful man sitting at the helm happens. But it happened at the AGM. And about time, I would say. So, and it came from Karnataka again. Uh, N.A. Aries, who is the president of uh, Karnataka Football Association, he is the one who stood up and basically he didn't demand elections. He just wanted, to, wanted clarification on what is the legal uh, situation now. Because uh, where uh, the AFF stands as of now is that they uh, they don't they have not ad adapted a new constitution as per the national sports code. So uh, 
the lawyers of ASS has presented the uh, case to to the court that they can only hold the elections once the constitution has been ad adapted. And so Praful Patel and the current bunch of administrations, Praful Patel specifically as president of AIFF, his three-year term, three term is over. It got over in December 2020. That's more than a year now. And mm. it has been extended since then with no idea, no clarification as to when the constitution would be ad adopted and when the elections would be subsequently held. But the point is now where the state associations are wondering is that Supreme Court's order did not say that elections can't be held without a new constitution. They just said you should adopt a new con uh, constitution. But holding elections had nothing to do with it. But it's it's a matter of interpreting, in, uh, interpreting that order. And mm. AFF has been interpreting it the way it fits them. So now what has happened? Uh, Harris from Karnataka, he stood up and he asked the question. And then there was, uh, obviously, Praful Patel is not going through a nice phase as of now, because you mentioned, uh, I mean, we, we mentioned in our previous show about the uh, things that have transpired, mismanagement and mismanagement from, from the National Federation, because they are the, they are the local organizing committee, as far as the AFC Asian Women's Championship is concerned and how the Indian football team exited the way it did with the spate of uh, COVID-19 infections and how that, I mean, how it was, uh, that, that situation was reached because of mismanagement of, of way, at various levels. So uh, at that point, Praful Patel had come out and said, let's not point fingers at each other now. I guess uh, the, uh, the state body officials did not understand what he was trying to say because they have started pointing fingers already. And some semblance of democratic push is happening within the Federation, which is heartening to see. And so, mm -hmm. uh, Praful Patel immediately, he, he said that we will form a committee, three member committee, out of which Harris was immediately named as one of the members of the committee. And then they said he will name two more, two, mm -hmm. and they will be given 30 days of time to check on what exactly is the status, the legal status is, and also why uh, the constitutional option uh, the constitution is not considered by the court and uh, not even open that way to check whether it's valid and then uh, the federation be asked to adopt it and then post mm. that election. So all these factors or maybe stage the elections in itself without without the constitution to start with. Why? Mm. Because Harris himself was apparently, and this is quoting sources, was apparently very sarcastic in his, in his, in his statement when he stood up and said that uh, we have become a laughing stock, as in the Federation. And uh, let's just for, for the heck of it, let's, I mean, unanimously pass a resolution now and make you president for the fourth, fourth term. And let's put an end to it and let's give clarity to the world. So, mm. uh, I mean, otherwise, uh, otherwise this is not happening. This is bad for, bad for sport. That's what he meant. Mm. And so in reply to that only, because obviously Mr. Patel couldn't, take that hands down because it is a direct sarcastic criticism towards his, 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 the way he is running the show. So he, he said, I'll form the committee. But then it's been 48 hours now, close to 48 hours. And till now, there has been uh, no sign of or no releases or no any indication that the other two members have been appointed. So they are sitting on it. And mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, the AGM press release that was sent by All India Football Federation to the journalists, it never had any mention of this discussion, this part of the discussion. It's not, it's not uh, a matter of national security. It, it is, in fact, possibly the most important discussion Indian football is having at this point, which is its mm -hmm. elections, because that determines the future course of, the, of football in the country. So they have been secretive about that as well. So uh, I, I'm, I'm expecting, and I was talking to this. This report was filed by our uh, correspondent, senior journalist Jaydeep Basu. So I had a word with him in the morning to understand what where exactly the federation stands. So he said that he's expecting some news by the end of the day because many of the members uh, after the AGM they are they are traveling back to their respective states. So by the end of the day there might be some clarity using his sources to understand where I, what, what action 
that has been taken by all india football mm-hmm. federation if not something official comes out by then that is right. so it's things are still in a limbo it's not like elections will happen tomorrow but mm. some process has started and some questioning has happened and questioning has happened at various level because election was one point they were questioning about the covid relief fund and the states in fact demanded more funds for uh, into that regard and without it being an agenda in the agm again aff was forced to uh, accept the demand and then promise that they will release some percentage of fund again to the to the state unit so this this was one point kerala association for instance expressed its displeasure because when the women's national championship was staged last year in the state uh, mm. the kerala state football association was not in the loop apparently uh, the all india football federation had a direct tie up with the kerala government and they staged it and ksfa had very little role to play in that which which they expressed their displeasure for that so uh, there are many friends that are open for for the current uh, office bearers of all india football federation and uh, it is i mean the way i see it it's all leading to uh, possibly a democratic change in the in the way sport is run in the country football is run yeah. in the country there are of course uh, according to the national sports code or or uh, these ideas there are of course limitations on both the age as well as the number of terms that a particular person yes. in- can hold uh, a post like a president's post which is very different from that of the general secretary for example who is a, a professional who is appointed and paid for the job that they uh, do all right thanks lethi for that update and and you can of course read that story on our website newsclick.in uh, we will also be following up on all of this uh, on our <coughs> sister channel 420 grams uh, where we talk about all things indian football so Uh, Jaydeep will be uh, on there. Uh, I think we'll wait till the end of the day as as uh, information emerges. Then perhaps uh, tomorrow we'll have a, a nice long deep dive into what is happening uh, in the politics of Indian football, uh, not from an external or an outside perspective, but just in terms of how it's governed. Because if there's one thing that we uh, do understand in India, it's uh, the importance of elections uh, so yeah uh, but we will move on from there let's to the uh, final of the afc women's uh, championship that was held in navi mumbai uh, last evening late afternoon early evening a uh, great game dramatic finish south korea going two goals up uh, in the first half and then china coming back as late as the 65th 66th minute Uh, getting on the score sheet, uh, scoring not one, not two, but three goals in the last twenty twenty five minutes, yeah. win uh, another Asian Championship, and kind of cap a resurgence uh, in a sense, a revival mm-hmm. of of, uh, of its women's national team, uh, which aims to, of course, now go on to uh, the FIFA Women's World Cup and uh, represent Asia and do well and try to shake some of that dominance of. Uh, the North Americans that they have established over the past few few tournaments. Uh, we we uh, we talked about, of course, uh, the disappointing way in which India went out. But apart from that, let's see a very very great, a very good tournament. Sorry, and a great advertisement for uh, women's football, and also a, a small statement uh, that uh, women's football is back, perhaps. it was never a way as far as the continental scheme of things is concerned because we have some strong in a, in a, in a pandemic context yeah yeah of course of course yeah in that sense it is it is back and back with some bigger if i can use that word and uh, quality was i mean uh, there was never a, a doubt that way that uh, the quality of football that would be on display at the asian championship would be anything below global standards to start with especially the top teams and it was clearly evident in the in the knockout matches semi finals and finals for for sure mm. and knockout matches yeah uh, i was we were hop we all hoping that india would make it to the quarter final and then have a bit of a stake in in trying to qualify for the world cup and all that but uh where the way the place where indian women's football stand indian football stand in general uh i don't think uh, we deserve to actually get that slot either because look at the representation of asian 
countries that would be there at the World Cup. We want the cream to be there. And let's accept it, India is not the cream yet. So, we have a long way to go. And uh, talking about cream, that's what uh, Korea, again, they, they were always a quality side, but they never used to make it to the to the um, podium that way. Uh, losing out to teams like we, we, we do forget that we also have Australia in the Asian mix. And yeah. also uh, Japan, China, all quality sides. And they, they really played well. They took the game to the Chinese. They, in fact, were winning the cup till, till, till 60 minutes. And that is where, uh, I mean, again, in our report, in our post-match report, Vibha Raghunandan, who was covering the tournament for us, he, he mentioned that small point, which, which I find it very interesting. And I would repeat it, I'm sure. I, I, I'm sure there was an elaborate discussion on that also at the 420 gram show, post match show that you you did last night. Yeah. So uh, Korea had a British coach, China had a Chinese coach, a legendary player from their stable, and I've had a sporting experience of other kind. Like I was a wrestler, and uh, you you go through bouts, you trail bouts, you fight back and win bouts, right? And there is a bit of a role that the person who sits in the chair has to push you towards that victory when you're trailing. Of course, and, yeah. and to get across to you, of course, there should be a connect. He should have trained you. He should, have, he should understand your strengths and weaknesses and where your mind is at certain points. All these factors are there because it's an individual sport. Mm. But the biggest factor is getting across to you. And so... The presence of a Chinese coach speaking their language and their emotions, their understanding, their priorities. I mean, all these cultural factors, everything comes into play in that sense, in that crunch situation. So that, that major factor is something that uh, possibly is, some, uh, is, is an important point for Asian football to push towards, uh, for, for the women's football to push towards, uh, I mean, uh, challenging the uh, superiority or the control of uh, the North American teams or the European teams have in the sport. And also the men's team also, because we all, Asian countries, India included, they, we all go for European coaches, foreign coaches, create language barriers between them and us. We get interpreters, we get different, all sort of things to uh, make it work after that. But why do that when when we should, we should be looking at uh, holistic development of the game, of the national team setup, by introducing people who understand the pulse of each and every player and where they come from, and that is uh, that, that is very difficult to achieve, because uh, achieve with a foreign coach, because he is simply even whatever the study, whatever the homework, whatever the attempt that he makes, he still has that uh, as a, a bit of barriers to cross, and so that was very evident, and that's the that's the. Take away in a neutral perspective, as a football lover, I would take from this tournament. As far as gameplay and pure game sense is concerned. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, women's game, uh, there was a lot of buzz about about the game happening, about the tournament happening in India. People, people are talking, actually. People are talking in my circles, outside my circles also. I see them talking about the women's game and how uh, the action is great, the matches were good. India's disappointment was, I mean, mourned across the country. And uh, that that kind of a conversation starter is always great for the sport because what it does is that it, it, is, it is the next generation, the upcoming generations that benefit from that. Provided, yeah. again, the governing body of football in the country has that kind of a diligence to set up these things, use the momentum, catch them. Because mm -hmm. I, again, looking at how football has progressed from, say, for instance, the 2017 under 17 World Cup, the boys' World Cup that happened in India. Mm. I don't think any drastic setup changes were made to take that momentum and push it forward. Those set of players who trained, who had tremendous exposure, they, are, they have been pushed and graduated into higher levels within the Indian setup. Yeah. Uh, but beyond that, if you look at the uh, the wider the scheme of things, wide, wider scheme of thing, the structure that is in place and all that, nothing has 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 been changed from yeah. 2016. 
from what it was in 2016 it's it's it's, it's still the same or maybe you can even say that it might have deteriorated a little with the with the pandemic happening and with breaks no, breaks in no doubt about it yeah it has yeah. Uh, so, pandemic has massively impacted it and and taken us uh, no doubt back a couple of steps uh, on yeah. that front so the, not just from a football perspective but from from every perspective so i don't think uh, football in any way is special in that context yeah. Yeah. so i want to check again with you on that let me just i mean now these aspects have been discussed and discussed again right now but as far as the quality of the game is concerned again uh, what you saw on the pitch and also players who have emerged and all these things and also the little bit that we saw of indian what do you think asian women's football is where do you think it is at this juncture because this was also a display of quality and intent of the continent mm. and and as far as women's football is concerned asia has been up there yeah yeah no i, I think uh, first of all many people mostly men uh, adopted a very sort of uh, supercilious attitude towards uh, the tournament or the game in, in general uh, a lot of those notions i think have been completely dispelled if people sat and watched Uh, like you saying particularly uh, the semi finals and the finals yeah uh, to answer your question about where it, the women's game stands in asia i think there are many similarities in that in that sense from where the game stands overall anywhere in the world mm. Uh, mm. the opportunities to play for uh, these women irrespective of what country they come from uh, i think are very very limited uh, you have you know and it's a very diverse continent of course Uh, many individual nations have specific local conditions that uh, impact all of these things right uh, yet you see some small steps being made uh, positive steps iran playing the tournament for the first time sending a team to the tournament for the first time and also simultaneously winning uh, the futsal championship the, the continental futsal okay. championship so demonstrating that okay maybe 11 a side football is a new sport for women in iran but that's only because they have not been historically given the opportunity to play at all it's not because they don't know the sport they don't love the sport and they cannot play the sport so that's that level of of uh, new entrants in mm-hmm. that sense in the scheme of things and then you go to the other end of of the 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 spectrum which is the japan and and the, and the chinas and the australias and uh, of course uh, south korea as well uh, philippines making it to the semi finals yeah that was and a surprise yeah amazingly yeah pulling off upset after upset uh, with a very young squad a squad again that doesn't have the opportunity to play uh, club level football you know so so yeah. it it has it has reminded us of how unfair and how much inequity there is uh, in this sport that we spend so much time talking about watching playing and love so much and in in fact a sport that gives us so much of or me at least uh, so much of uh, my it's like a prism to understand what is happening in the wider world right so so in that context i mean the tournament has the women that played in the tournament participated in the tournament gave us good reason to look at ourselves to introspect and and ask ourselves these questions why are we not providing opportunities to everyone to play why is it mm-hmm. that only men get to play and uh, women don't so and and of course it has also sh- once again shown the hollowness of of uh, intent as far as administrators are c- concerned you know yeah. the superficiality of it everyone comes and says this, this is a great advertisement for women's football you don't have advertising who are you advertising it to what what, what okay. do you need hold the showcase tournament fine theek hai bahut badhiya hai right but when you ask the question what is happening with with the women's game in india just hosting uh, or participating in a continental championships is nowhere close to enough you you get uh, the, the chance to you know host the tournament in house i think there's a fly on my camera sorry so a lot of people benefit from it and no doubt uh, you know and and that's why so much disappointment when when india went out because uh, ha- those two extra matches playing in in a tournament setting 
would have added a great deal, I think, to the growth of the, uh, those 20 or so players who would have participated in it. Uh, unfortunately, it happened the way it did. It was a worst case scenario for the All India Football Federation, but but an important worst case scenario. And unfortunately, the collateral damage is the team that had to withdraw from the tournament. But the way it happened, again, reiterates, underlines, highlights uh, the completely sort of, I mean, there's, there's no aspect of equality in the way in which we approach uh, the sport. So, so for me, the main learning thing has been from, uh, from this tournament has been that one, Asian women's football is, uh, the, like we said before the tournament started, these are the best athletes at what they do in the world. So uh, it, it was a great opportunity for our audience, even though we couldn't attend in stadium, but at least it was happening in our time zone and we had good television coverage. So we got a chance to watch some of the best in the world. Uh, and secondly, it's just underlined uh, the, the broad and sweeping uh, inequality that just pervades the entire system. I agree to that. And also, as, as far as uh, the AGM for Indian Football Federation is concerned, I don't think larger questions like these were discussed. Yeah, politics is discussed. That's an important aspect. Democratic process, like I mentioned, is important too. But I'm just hoping when these changes come in within the setup of the Federation, the real questions of sport, the ones that we have been ra raising through 420 grants as well as news clicks coverage of football, I hope some of those as well as the larger and the uh, larger developmental agenda is 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 implemented in in Indian football. That's 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 all we can hope for, I guess. Yeah. And and, uh, and because you know, like you're saying, there is a democratic process in this. The thing about football is that it's it is a mass participation sport. Every mm -hmm. all, Mm -hmm. Of course, when I say everyone, I don't mean everyone, everyone, but more, but every part of the world plays yeah. and loves this this game. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are questions not just being asked by the media or by some of us, or you know, they are being asked by by people who are playing, by women who are on yeah. the ground, by coaches, uh, and the entire structure. Everyone who is involved in the game and loves the game. And is not given the opportunity to do anything in that game simply because they are a woman is asking that question. So, yeah, um, yeah so I think it's uh, from that sense, if the conversation is carried forward, it will help. And uh, I think more and more pressure needs to be put on these supposedly democratic bodies that are governing sport uh, across. And in, like, you know, in your sport, uh, wrestling, the kind of change that has come over the past two or three decades, something that used to be a complete male bastion. Now, mm -hmm. uh, at, the, at least at the elite level, we have as good a chance of uh, winning medals at the Olympics in women's uh, wrestling as we do in, in men's sport. And I think in terms of the kind of resources that are dedicated to it, maybe it's not equal exactly uh, still, but at least there's an effort underway to get there. And it's getting yeah. in the gaps. Gaps are get, getting uh, smaller. Getting narrower, narrower. But yeah. but uh, also wrestling has an advantage because it's just an individual sport, and uh, uh, one can't actually undermine quality of a wrestler when when you she she goes out and faces the world. It, yeah. There is always a. I mean, it's 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 an easier fight compared to a team sport like football. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying easy in that sense. It, there has always been like uh, wrestling and from the pockets that these women wrestlers come from, they have fought a lot of things to reach where they are. So uh, that is that is obviously there. But again, having said that, the, uh, I mean, where are the administrators then? So when we had a problem in, in Tokyo with Inesh Foget demanding a VCO for the women wrestlers and the federation of officials targeted her, men in the federation targeted her. So just very quickly, and that's a brief bit because we, we've already, we're just going to be playing an excerpt from an interview that we did a couple of days ago. Uh, so the Africa Cup of Nations also concluded it was the other final that was played yesterday. Uh, and no goals in that game. Uh, a victory for Senegal in the end over Mo Salah and uh, Egypt. Um, but 
But uh, of course, I think uh, those of us who are interested in, in the game would have watched it and followed it. And, and we, we, we're not talking about that here. We're talking specifically about uh, the idea that FIFA has been pitching off a World Cup every two years. And uh, so in that context, we spoke to uh, New Frame, which is a social, ju- uh, social justice independent publication based in South Africa. Their sports editor, uh, Japulo Ngidi, was, uh, joined us to talk about the politics around uh, the Africa Cup of Nations in the specific context of Cameroon and Paul Bia, who is uh, the, the leader of that country and has been for decades. Uh, but also about the politics of football with the African, uh, the CAF, which is the Confederation of African uh, Football Federations, and why there may be support for Gianni Infantino's uh, idea of a World Cup every two years, even though some of his comments were shocking, uh, racist, and just deeply, deeply problematic. Uh, so let's listen. Uh, so we'll pl- we'll plug a little bit of of that show, and I'll also ask our producers to put links in the description to the the full versions of those interviews, so you can check those out uh, if you'd like. For Africa, the, the Binal World Cup is it makes sense because that's also how the Nations Cup is held, and part of the driving force for the Nations Cup was that. The host nation is going to improve in terms of resources and infrastructure that is going to be built for to host this. So for for Africa, there isn't much to lose in a Binal World Cup uh, because of the money that is going to go to federations for preparations. That's why and and that's where Africa is speaking from in terms of 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 the financial rewards. It it makes sense for for the continent that because that's essentially why the, the AFCON is there every two years. It makes financial sense for care from the sponsors, but also for the federation. So federations would never speak ill of, of something that makes them money. And that's where you UEFA, and that's why uh, <laughs> Kev has a thorny relationship with, with FIFA in that in certain moments, their decision favor Africa, but it's not favoring Africa in that because they care, it's because it makes them financial sense. So that's, that's why like, Infantino, I mean, he slaps us with one hand and then caresses us with the other. And it, it's, it's a very complicated relationship. Right. So, so like I said before, you can, of course, watch the that entire interview on uh, multiple of our channels. Actually, you can go to News Click, you can go to People's Dispatch, or you could go to 420 Grams, whichever you prefer and is easiest for you. Uh, we'll, of course, try to get Njabulo back uh, very soon to do a maybe recap of uh, AFCON from both a football perspective as well as a politics perspective. Um, if that's at all of any interest to anyone, it is to us, I think. So we'll end up doing it anyway, uh, whether anyone watches or not. But if you have been watching, thank you so much. Uh, we'll be back again next week with uh, another bunch of stories. Leslie giving us his perspective on what's happening in sport, uh, not just on the pitch, but also off it. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again soon. Goodbye.